Howdy everybody. Just wanted to come here today and talk to you about another little puzzle and a solution to it. Maybe an algorithm you can add to your toolkit or maybe it's not necessarily an algorithm but a, a, a notion, um, you know, some tool that you can use to help you solve some problems. Um, and uh, so what we're gonna do is go over actually day 19 of year 2022 for Advent to Code. So not the latest, but the, the previous one, this is where I had stopped for day for year 2022 when I was doing it two years ago. Uh, so we're going to try and solve that. And I'll show you one of the problems. I think two years ago, I probably wouldn't have been able to solve this. But just after practicing more problems and algorithms, I was able to get an idea of how to solve this and get to it. So but before we go there again, just thank you very much for everyone's support and uh, um, liking, subscribing, following, doing all those things that you do. It's always uh, fun to hear from you as well, the comments. Um, I love to get your feedback and your solutions and to read them over and, and see how they go. I've been thinking about if someone has an idea of a great way to like share solutions and stuff like that, I know it's hard in YouTube. You can technically post links in YouTube, but I have to like approve them. So, um, I, I mean, obviously if you're just linking to a gist, I don't have a problem with that, but, um, anyway, if there's, if anyone has any ideas for great ways to like share code besides just gists and stuff like that, um, uh, I'd be happy to entertain that and see what we can do. Uh, because again, I think the best way to understand all this stuff is just to look at other people's code, see how they solved it. That's what I always did early on, especially when I just had like, you know, no idea how to solve a problem. So um, anyway, with that, let's get into it. So like I said, we're at uh, the year 2022, day 19 for Advent of Code. This one was called Not Enough in Minerals. Um, what you've been doing before this is you've been trying to help some elephants get through a cave and you like finally make your way out. Um, and you notice there's a bunch of geodes around that you want to pick up. And, and so the idea of the, the general idea is um, you can build a bunch of different types of robots, but they all have different costs. Um, uh, and the, the question is, is there some configuration of robots you can build over a limited amount of time that will give you the most geodes, right? So if you imagine, and you're given different blue blueprints, right? So for each blueprint, you're supposed to figure that out. So they give you like this definition where it says an ore robot costs four ore, a clay robot costs two, an obsidian robot costs three ore and 14 clay, and a geode robot costs two ore and seven obsidian, right? So you can see there's kind of this nature of the, both of these cost ore, and then this one you can't build until you've built up enough clay. And then you can't build a geode unless you until you've built up enough obsidian, right? So there's some notion of, um, at least for this first blueprint, is how fast can I get enough uh, uh, clay to build an obsidian robot? And then how many of those can I build fast enough so such that I get enough to build a geode robot as quickly as possible, right? And then you want to like be spitting out geode robots as much as you can, or geodes from the geodes ro robots as much as you can, right? So this is, uh, I, I mean, that's essentially what you're doing. The way they want you, they, they go through a whole example and basically what they want you to do for part one is for all of your blueprints, uh, there's like a dozen of them. I think there's actually like 30. Anyway, there's quite a few blueprints for part one. They want you to like figure out the quality level, which is just the blueprint ID times its quality and add those up, right? For part two, oh, and this one is 24 minutes, I should say. So you've only got 24 minutes. So the question is how many geodes can you, what are the maximum number of geodes can you make in those 24 minutes? Part three, part two changes in that you now have 32 minutes, but you only have to do it for the first three blueprints and then they want a product of those three. Both the parts though are the way to think about it is like a branching problem, right? Like how do you decide when it's a good time to build another ore robot? How do you decide when it's a good time to build another clay robot versus, uh, you know, use your ore and clay to build an obsidian robot, right? 
I should also mention you can only build one robot per minute. And so if you say, if, if you have a choice of building a clay robot and an obsidian robot, you now have to decide which way is better. Is it better to build a clay robot or an obsidian robot, right? So um, there's all these little choices you have to make. And you can think about that as like branching out into all these different ways to um, to find a solution, right? And that's kind of the naive intuition of this, right? Is the way to think about that naive intuition is like something like this, right? You start here at this state with, um, with uh, your initial state of like, here's how much ore I have, here's the robots I have. <clears throat> and then you branch and you say, well, if I have enough to build an ore robot, maybe I build that right here. And if I have enough to build a clay robot, maybe I build that right here, right? If I don't, maybe I just keep, I, I don't build anything, right? And so you're, and but then for each of these, you have to, you now have to make a decision is like, now that I built the ore robot that I that I chose to build up here, I'm now making more ore. Is that going to help me like build more clay uh, or or get to more clay robots, which will help me get to more obsidian robots and so on, right? And this is where this is like in most other problems is these most other problems like this is these branchings get quite large, right? If you think about it at any minute in time, you can make a lot of decisions and those decisions have like far reaching consequences, right? If you make too many clay robots, for example, you'll have a bunch of clay, but you'll have not made any time to build the obsidian or geodes, right? So it's like finding that optimal path, right? Where you say, oh, the optimal path is actually to go here and then here and then down here, right? I've only shown a few of these layers, but you can imagine the branches go forever. And we'll actually look at the code or look at the number of, of ones in a second. But that's generally the naive idea, right? Is I have to just do all these branches. And this is not, we've done a lot of graph theory stuff. So, uh, you know, we've seen things like this before, right? Is like, essentially what we're trying to do is find the optimum path from this initial state to some goal state, right? And what our goal state here is not some node, right? What our goal state here is actually is like, what are what is the maximum number of geodes, right? So our goal is the max of geodes. Like this is our goal. So it's not, <clears throat> um, and, and the reason I wanna highlight that is um, this is, you can think of this as like a graphing problem, right? You can think of it as a graphing problem. But it's not like it's not finding the the one node right here that solves the problem, right? Like we've seen before uh, with like Dijkstra's and stuff like that. What we're actually trying to do is we want to we want to like go through all of these and figure out which one the best one is, right? So there's not any one single. Well, there will be one single node that produces that one. I should take that back. There's there there's it's quite possible that many of them will get you many of them will end up with the max number of geodes like say the maximum number is 12 some of these many at least at least one of them will produce 12 but many of them could right but we won't know what the max is we won't know what this value is until we've like traversed all these paths and checked them all at least in the naive solution right we just need to check all the paths and find which one produces the maximum. And then we have our solution to the problem. Now, this is a problem where this becomes an issue is when that branching gets a lot, right? It gets huge. And I'm going to go to the code here for a second. Just to show, I'm not actually going to go to the solution, but I want to give you an idea for one of the blueprints. If you don't do any branching, that's what this one is right here. Um, there are 139 million like terminal or checks that you do throughout the tree, right? What is that saying? There's 139 million of these nodes in the tree 
that you need to traverse before you figure out what that is, right? <clears throat> well, that's not huge, but it is large. And so if you just did this, imagine you're doing 100, that one took me what, like two seconds to figure it out for this one. This is the naive approach up here. This is the number. This is the number for the naive approach. It took me two seconds. Now imagine if you have 30 of those, figure it's going to take about a minute to solve all of them. Maybe you can do some branching or sorry, some uh, parallelization, which I actually do in the code. I use rayon down here. We'll see in a second. But so maybe you do some of that stuff. And, and so it, it runs a lot faster. Maybe instead of 30 seconds or sorry, 60 seconds, you can run it in 15 or seconds or something like that. But it's still relatively long. And um, especially for part three, now that you are sorry, part two, even though you only have to check three, you now have to check, and I didn't even do the math for this because it would just take forever. I mean, I can start running it and see what it looks like. <clears throat> I'm almost positive, though, it will take forever to run, and we just won't ever see an answer to it. Um, let me do that really quick while we're talking about this. Da -da 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 -da. So we're going to do this one. Uh... We're going to do this state again. I'll talk about this code in a second, but for 32. The problem is, is because you go from 24 to 32, you now have like a much longer it's, it's now going to take you. Oh, I don't I don't want to do that either. It's now gonna take you much longer to solve it, right? So this one takes two seconds. I'll let it run for a few seconds, but I presume it's it's gonna take a while. Potentially not ever return. I just don't know how many they are. We'll have to look and see what happens. But the idea is the longer it goes and the more branches you have to make, each time you branch, you're now creating like um, a huge number of additional solutions. Like if you tracked it from like how many are there at one second, versus two seconds, versus three seconds, and so on and so on, it grows exponentially, right? It just becomes enormously huge. Each one is like <clears throat> um, orders of magnitude bigger than the previous is the way to think about it. So how do you how do you fix this naive intuition where you're like, oh, I, I'm calculating all these things. I need to, I, I, I don't want to, is there some way for me to like, um, minimize the nodes that I have to traverse. That's the way to think about it, right? If there's a whole bunch of these, is there some way that I can minimize that? Because think about it. If there's some way for you to say, oh, I don't even need to go down this path. You've now reduced your the work you have to do by a third, at least from this point in time right here, right? And if you can do two of them, that's even better, right? Now you've reduced, reduced the work you have to do by two thirds. So the question is, is there some way for you to determine, oh, this is not a good path for me to follow. And that is what we call branch and bound. And this is, again, it's an algorithm. It's a method for solving uh, optimization problems, right? The idea is we've got some naive solution, unoptimized. Can we... Can we minimize, can we bound the number of cases that we actually have to look for? And I should say, uh, the branch and bound is kind of a generalized term. And some of the tools we've already learned fall into this category, right? So if you watch the video on Dijkstra's, if you watch the video on A star, those are all like specific implementations of the branch and bound problem, right? Think about what they are. You're taking a, a whole space of branches in a in a graph, and you're reducing it. You're reducing the number of nodes that you have to visit, especially in something like the A star that we've looked at before, right? It's where you can do a really good job of minimizing it. And so, what what is it? <clears throat> the branch and bound. The general idea is: can you come up with some heuristic? 
that will tell you going further down this branch is not going to help you anymore, right? Just like the A star algorithm, where uh, in that case, we are using a priority queue. But the general idea is when you're when you're at some node or when you're at some point in your algorithm, you can ask yourself, is this thing going to is this thing going to produce a, a better answer? And if it's not, then there's no reason for you to go down that path. So how does how does it work in real in reality, right? Is imagine you're right here. This is not the first node anymore. And right now your current best is 15, right? Your current best is 15 uh, for the number of geodes or just anything in general, right? You've been tracking some kind of best. In our case, it's the number of geodes we've created. Um, if we can come up with some heuristic for this node right here, and it says that the best I'm going to get out of this node is 12, well, there's no reason for us to go down that path. If I call the heuristic here and it says it's probably 20, then, oh, we do want to travel down this node because this one's likely to give us some values. And if we get a heuristic down here that says, oh, this one's likely to produce 40. Oh, wow, that's really awesome. We definitely want to travel down this one. And in fact, I don't do this in my one. I'm just doing a depth first search. But if you were using some kind of priority queue, you could say, oh, I definitely want to try this one first before I get down here. Because if I actually do find that best down here that's 40, then when I come here and traverse it, I don't have to try it again, if that makes sense. But that's that's the idea, right? Is like, can you come up with some heuristic that says, here's what I'm likely to likely to get? And I just want to talk about that for a little bit. That they this is the bounding part of it when they talk about branch and bounding, is we use this heuristic to tell us how we uh, should we continue down that path. And so they describe here like the generic implementation of this. I won't go into too many details. But again, you just imagine you're going down every node and you're saying, hey, I'm going to calculate a heuristic for my current position. And again, what is a heuristic? I think I said this last time. It's just some quicker way than actually trying to solve the problem to come up with an estimation of its value. So what it's saying is come up with a heuristic, find what you think it will be for that node. And if, if it if it's a solution to the problem, if it's going to be better, then we want to try and use that down here, right? So we're going to take a node off the cube. Um, if it represents something that's better, then we want a branch and we want to check the bound, right? If it's, if it's bad, then we do nothing. Otherwise, add ourselves to the queue. I probably didn't explain the way they did this better as well as they did if you read through it. But the idea is generally the same, right? Uh, hopefully you're getting the idea of at any point in time, if I know what my current best is and I can do a quick calculation of what my best is likely to be if I go down that path, then I will uh, get myself, then I should go down that path. If it's not going to produce a better result, then there's no reason for me to do that, right? So, <clears throat> I want though to talk about what that heuristic is because that actually becomes important, right? So um, the question is, what uh, heuristic should I use? Like that, there you go. Which one should I use? Well, there's some things to think about. Obviously, it shouldn't lead you astray, right? Um, that is to say, if you calculate an h of x for 12 over here, this should 100% be the lower bound of what you could get in this value, right? It Meaning you can't get anything higher in here, right, is the way to think about it. If uh, So that should be something that your heuristic should, should say, right, is uh, never anything... Uh, sorry, uh, better is probably the way to say it, right? Better in this path. So that's just an implementation detail that you need to do. Otherwise, it will fail, right? 
if your heuristic doesn't adhere to this and say this path produces a 50, this one ends up being 50, but you ignore it because you thought it was 12 and you go down here and your solution ends up being 42, right? That's not good because 50 was actually the best. So, and uh, they talk about this here in some of the details somewhere, I'm sure they do. Uh, maybe they don't, I don't remember. You can read through this and get an idea, but that's a key thing is this should be like a, a lower, uh, or a, uh, how do I say it? An upper bound of the value. Did I say lower bound the last time? This should be an upper bound of the value, meaning like there's no way I'm going to get anything uh, better than this if I go down this path. And so that's just something to think about. So when you think about it this way, when we're like building robots and we're looking for geodes, if we do some mistake in our implementation and we do, like, for example, we say, oh, what if I can build, um, I'm trying to think of a way that would ruin it now. Uh, some way that you could like build, uh, oh, uh, what if you could, what if your naive, your heuristic just assumed that you built one of each robot every time and now you're like producing way more than you'd ever be able to produce? that heuristic might throw your branching off, right? Uh, okay, so those are just some things to think about, right? I mean, I, that may not be a perfect example, but I hope it, uh, it illustrates the point is like, you should never have anything down this path that is better than the heuristic returns. But um, there's another thing to consider, like uh, the better, uh, the estimation, uh the more you bound okay sorry i apologize for my writing oh that's not even showing up on the screen i'll move this just for a second that so like the better the estimation the more you bound right so that's just something to consider maybe i should just always keep it down here tell me where you like it i'll start i'll leave it right here for now um but the better the estimation the more you can bound, right? Like if you're always providing really high values, right? Um, you'll keep going down these paths, um, and so you'll you'll have to you, you'll have to go down more paths than you would if you found a better heuristic. Um, so the way to think about this is like it's kind of like a weighing game, right? Is Obviously, you want to find one that's really fast, but you don't want to find one that's wrong either, right? If it's if it's a wrong heuristic, it's going to break the whole problem. But if you can find ways to quickly do it, and, and quickly is relative, right? Is like maybe this heuristic takes you like, um, you know, uh, this is like um, O of 2N or whatever. Um, and, uh, and there's a better heuristic, but it is O of, you know, 10 N or whatever. Um, even though this one's technically like five times longer, if you're, if it, if it's substantially better and it's like removing whole bound, whole br bunches of things that you don't have to hit that, that will often lead to bigger improvement. Right? So while you obviously don't want to have some heuristic that's like, um, you know, um, so terrible that it would be faster to like go down the branch, you you should just pay attention to how complex is my heuristic, right? It should be an estimation, I guess is maybe the easiest way to say it. Make sure you're estimating. Make sure your estimation though is the upper bound and you you haven't like missed something because of it. But then also, um, you know, try and make it as accurate as possible, but as quickly as possible. I hope I've illustrated that point. And if you can do that, you then reduce like the size of things that you need to do. So the way, so the question then to ask is how do that, how does that apply to like this problem, right? Well, when we're branching, think about at each point in time, we, we can say, oh, can I build a robot? And if I can build a robot, how much does it cost? And how does that affect my, you know, that 
I can add that to my state of next things to consider, right? And um, I think in my code, I just said, hey, when's the next time that I can build each robot? And then add that as one of my next possible states. And then I can bound it and I can, I can do a heuristic and check, does having that extra robot actually get me further in the end, if that makes sense? Um, uh, and so by that means, even though I've got all of these to check, now I'm only checking like a subset of them. So let's go back to the code. And you can see the problem has still not finished, right? I have still not done it for 32 seconds. We've been running, I've been talking for several minutes, I guess, and have still not um, uh, solved that thing. So just let me kill that right there and we'll get rid of this one because it's obviously not going to finish. So I'll even... So this one's just not going to finish. So how do we solve this problem, right? Um, obviously, we we need to figure out like what these states are, like what are these states right here? And we need to figure out um, what the neighbors are to those states, right? What are those next states? And then we need to create a heuristic, right? We need to have something that will say, how likely is this state? to produce a better answer than our current best. And then once we do that, we can do a simple DFS. In fact, I can probably just show you that code right now. Here's my DFS. And again, this is that stands for depth first search, if you're not familiar. You could do breadth first, use a queue system. Uh, I don't know that there's any difference. Like obviously I'm using the stack here in a lot of the previous examples, especially Dijkstra and stuff like that, because you're using a priority queue. It was like a quote unquote best first search, I think is what they call it. Um, but because I knew I had to like visit every state, I just used depth first to do it, right? And so it's a recursive algorithm, right? I'm gonna track my best. And if I found a better one, that's my new best. I'm gonna call my heuristic function and see if, uh, this one is worse, and if this state is definitely worse than my best, then I don't need to continue going further. Otherwise, I'm gonna say, what are my next states? What are my neighbors? I think is what I've used before. I used next here because I wasn't really thinking neighbor-wise this time for some reason. But then I just call the DFS on those additional states, right? So there's a whole bunch of them I need to check, and I'm just gonna check through all of them until uh, I've either bound it, meaning I've, I've pruned that path, I'm not going down anymore, or I visited them all. And once I visited them all, I now have that best state, right? So this is a, a DFS in nature. If you've solved other problems before, or you get other problems like this, this is a common thing for depth first search, right? Is you're tracking something and you want to update that state. If you're bounding, obviously you want to run that heuristic, and then otherwise you just go further down the DFS uh, for each of the children nodes, right? For each of the next nodes in your state, so. So what do we need to do then for our code? Again, we need a heuristic, and I'll talk about those last. We need to know what our next ones are, and we need to know what our current state is, right? So let's talk about our current state. Um, let's see, I use this mineral enumeration as an index, you can see before I'm doing indexing right here. This is just some easy way for me to say like, oh, I want to get the clay or I want to get the ore out of the index. It's just a rust type thing. Um, uh, I thought it would be fun to play with it. I don't think I've used actual index or index mutes before. So I thought it would be fun to do that. But here's my list of minerals. And then I have a mineral set. Notice that, um, in the problem, some of these have multiple costs, right? They, it turns out that all of them have the same thing, right? Is an ore robot always costs some amount of ore. A clay ro robot always costs some amount of ore. An obsidian robot always costs some amount of ore and some amount of clay. And a geode robot o always costs some amount of ore and obsidian, right? So you just are tracking these numbers, but they're different like values for each of the numbers. So I created this mineral set. I also track the bank with it, right? And I also, I think I track the robots too, right? With this is the idea is 
here's my four types of minerals and here's how much I have in the bank or the robots or whatever. Um, when I, <clears throat> so you have a bank for part of it and you want to do a comparison for each of the robots to kind of say, hey, do I have enough to build that robot? And so I created a less than or equal function for it. Um, I, I You'll notice here in my note, it wasn't clear to me if like a par implementing partial order would be a great way to solve, to use this thing. Um, because you're not strictly per doing a partial order, right? Partial order is going to produce less, equal, or greater. And then it, uh, it wants you to implement partial equal. Um, and the equal seemed a little fuzzy to me is like, where where is that where is like the bank and the blueprint cost equal um so i i just implemented like this that being said as i was thinking it through is like i'm not using it anywhere else so i could probably just implement partial ord and partial equal and be done with it but i just created this function instead and said do i have enough of every mineral to purchase it or to build the robot and that would be as if you know, my minerals are less than or equal to all the other minerals, right? Uh, this from is just to help me implement into, and then I implemented some operators for the mineral sets, right? If you think about every minute, I'm going to add a, add some minerals to my bank, and that will be the number of robots I have. So I implemented add for that. I also implemented multiply because uh, you'll see in the algorithm, like at some, at some point you'll be like, oh, I want to skip ahead five minutes. Well, I want to add five minutes worth of minerals. And so I, I do the multiply for that. And then I do the subtract for if I'm ever buying a robot, right? So I just implemented those operators so it looks nicer down below. You don't have to do that, you know, and other languages do it different ways. You'll just have to track it, right? For my blueprint, I then just have the list of costs, right? So for each robot, what is the cost of, of that thing, right? And for this one, I just actually did, uh, I used a filter map. If you look at the input, uh, it looks like this. It turned out the only things you were interested in were these numbers right here. So I actually just did a, filter map where I said parse and is it okay uh, and so it's only going to actually give me back those numbers and then I can just hard code code my mineral sets here for the cost this is just an implementation detail essentially I'm going to get some input and I want to do the blueprints and this seemed like an easy enough way to do it just because of how the input was set up and then I need my state right so given all that stuff that was all to kind of get me prepped for what I need to do, right? Now I need my state, which is um, these right here, right? Like, how do I know, you know, how much money I have, or how many uh, minerals I have, how many robots I have, and all that stuff? That's what that state is right here. My alt tab was being weird, sorry. Um, and so obviously I need to know how many minutes I have remaining left to do my calculations, right? If there's no time left, then I'm done and I can't go on. And then uh, I wanna track my blueprints, right? So what robots can I build and how much do they cost? And then I wanna track my bank, how much, mo how many of the minerals do I have? And then the robots, what are the robots that I have that I can build those with, right? Um, so given that, now I, now I have my like quote unquote state right here. Now I just need to figure out what, you know, how do I figure out what my next valid states are, right? And so I do this in a for loop. That's this next function. I do it in a for loop. And I'm just asking the, and just for each of these, for each of the different minerals, the question I'm asking is, when is the next time I could build that robot? I actually tried to do this in a math way. If you think about it at like a really high level, like, um, you know, the next time you can build it is like your bank, how much you have in the bank minus the, um, uh, the cost of the robot. So this would give you like how much you have left that you are, I think it's the other way around, right? I, I did that wrong, huh? 
it's the cost of the robot minus the bank that you had the money that you already have in the bank to build it uh and then divided by um the number of robots you have right so if you have uh, imagine like the cost is 12 and you have two in the bank and you have uh three robots say you have three robots that's 12 minus 2 over 3 which is like what 3.33 repeating and you like if you round this up it gives you four right so th the earliest time you could build this robot is in four minutes i tried to do that math but i kept getting like weird division and multiplication errors and i don't know if it was because i was um tired or i was missing something but if you can figure out how to do it the math way i would love to see it um you just have to like there's some weird corner cases that i kept running into like obviously this doesn't work if you have zero robots so i had to add this case where all the robots are greater than zero that still didn't do it though um and i think it had to do with like these rounding errors like i think that was the issue with my code were the rounding errors so anyway if you have a solution to that i would love to see it because because i ended up just stepping through time um and uh i i think you can technically do this like faster i mean you're you're probably only doing i mean you're doing at most 32 iterations on part two and 24 on part one so i don't foresee this actually being a a huge like performance improvement but you could technically do this with math i just i don't know why i couldn't figure it out it's something i'm sure i'll come back to at some point and say why couldn't i do that but anyway i just step through the time that i have left and i increment my bank here's where those operators are used right so i increment my bank with bank with the number of robots i have and i do that until i can i uh, have enough money for the blueprint right i'm doing this for each mineral by the way right so i say for each robot or for each mineral when can i first build that robot when's the earliest time i can build that robot and once i get there then i just do some math to create the robot and update my state and then i add that to my list of next states right obviously if i don't have any like clay robots for example i would never be able to build obsidian so you'll kind of go through this for loop and never like build it and so you just don't add it to your state but the idea here again is i'm just thinking about what my next state is and what is my next states is well i only this uh, is only interesting when i build another robot if that makes sense um otherwise my state is just well i should say the reason only reason why that's interesting is because if you look back at the dfs what i did was i always said what is my best and my best is like if I use my current time, if I assume that I don't do anything else right now and just don't build any robots, I can calculate how many geodes I'd have, right? And that's how much time I have remaining times the number of robots I have plus what I already have in the bank, right? And so if I just always calculate that at every, every position in the node, the only thing that's going to change this value is if I get a new robot. And so that's why this state function up here or this next function up here is just interested in new robots, right? Um, and so that that's, uh, again, at a very high level, all I'm doing up here is for every mineral type, when could I build a robot of that type? And that would be when I have um, more money in the bank then I have to, then I could, then I need to produce it. And then I can, then I can do the math to add the robot and update my bank and push that state on there. Okay. Uh, okay. Last, the last thing to talk about. So we've talked about what is my state and what are my next or what are my neighbors. And so now I just need to figure out what is this heuristic? And this is what I, the rest of it, I think we'll talk about is I tried several ways and i'll show you my best way of doing it 
But here's the none heuristic, right? If I always just return the maximum value, the upper bound, um, that means I'm gonna check every single state, right? And so uh, this is like a very pure, pure, poor heuristic. You can imagine this just being a naive breadth first search approach or depth first search approach, right? Um, this was a heuristic that uh, one of our um, community members, Gordon508 gave us, and it was a pretty good one. Basically, it's just calculating, hey, if I could create a geode robot every minute, um, what would, how many geodes would I have at the end of that? And so this one's really quick. You're literally just doing math and you're just saying, how many geodes do I have right now? How many robots do I have right now? And, you know, come up with some and just assume you're creating new geode robots for each of those, if that makes sense. Um, so this, I thought this one was a really good one and it pared it down quite a bit. Here's the final one I came up with. It's a little bit more complicated, um, uh, but it ends up pruning it down quite a bit and I'll show you the difference, right? So it, and I will, I, I'm gonna be honest, it took me time. My first solution, my first heuristic looked a little bit like this one. I actually ran through it, but I just kind of assumed that I could build a robot regularly. Uh, I could build a geode robot pretty regularly and so I got something similar to this, it, it, but I did. I think I did it in a for loop instead of the math here. So Gordon 508 definitely, you know, using the math here to kind of figure it out, made it faster in that respect. Um, uh, but here's the end all one that gave me the best, right? I played around with a bunch of things. The general idea is just assume you have unlimited ore and clay and um, any point you can build a geode robot you do it uh and if you can't though just assume you can build an obsidian robot right and so how does this number differ from this number <clears throat> well th this one's actually slightly more accurate right this assumes you can build a geode robot every turn or every minute which you actually can't do and so this one's actually doing that math is saying i know i can't do one every minute but i can probably do one every like at first it will take me maybe like 10 minutes to do the first one, but then I can do the next one in eight and the next one in two and then, and so on or whatever. Right. So the idea is I'm going to be able to build more geode robots, but I'm not going to be able to build them as fast as this solution. Um, and so it kind of gives you like a better idea of how many rope of how many ge geodes you can get. Right. The way to think about this is, what we talked about before is this one is is slightly more complicated, right? So there's a little bit more work involved in it, but it gives you a better approximation, right? Whereas this one's just essentially, it's gonna give you a higher number, but be quicker. This one will give you a, a, a better number, but it'll take just, you know, a little bit longer. But because it produces the solution faster or because it does, uh, a, gives you a better idea of how close you are, um, it reduces that sample set that you are those nodes that you have to traverse, right? It does that pruning, I think is uh, the way that I've heard it before, right? So again, the idea is, can I build a geode robot? And if I can do that, otherwise build an obsidian robot. And I just assume I have as much ore and clay as I need for those purposes. So again, you could go one step further deep and maybe get further along there. It's like you assume, oh, can I, and I actually didn't try this. When this one actually returned fast enough, I stopped here. So there's a potential to find a better solution where you say, um, I'm gonna try to build a geode robot. And if I can't, I'm gonna try and build an obsidian. And if I can't do that, I'm going to assume I can just build a clay robot and build that. Right. Um, and maybe that gets you a lower, a better upper bound that makes it faster. So if someone wants to try that, I'd be interested to see how does that perform iteration wise. Right. So those are the two heuristics. So I'm just going to run them right now so you can see what they look like. Oh, did I kill it? Uh, 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 uh. 
here it is. Okay. I lost it for a second. So first let's talk about, uh, here's just a naive implementation, right? If we do, if we just traverse all of the nodes and I'm only doing this for one blueprint, right? I don't want to do it forever, uh, for all of them, but you can see it took 139 million iterations, which I think I talked about earlier. That's the total number of iterations it took to, you know, all the different visits you did of all the nodes and it produced 12 for this one. Uh, this is the where you just assume you build a geode robot every minute. And that one, you can see it's an order of magnitude better, right? Is like now you're only calculating 14 million or you're only doing 14 million um, checks of the thing, right? You're saying, oh, I only have to traverse now 14 million. So that's a whole order of magnitude better. And you can see why. So this one takes two seconds and this one takes 200 milliseconds substantially faster because you've greatly reduced that, right? Here's the final one I came up with. And again, it, it may not be the best. I would love to see, I'm sure someone can come up with a better heuristic where, you, where you've drilled it down even more. But here's the best one I came up with. And you can see it's an, uh, an order of magnitude or more better than this one, right? It's like this one was 14 million. This one's less than a million. It's only 780,000 iterations you do, right? So you go from, think about where you started here, 139 million checks to now only 78,000, a substantially better solution, right? Um, and all of that, again, was because of branch and bounding, right? We know we're doing a lot of branching. So can we create bounds where we say it's not worth checking all those other branches and you just eliminate huge swaths of it, right? Like 139 million versus one, I eliminated like 99% of the branches that I would normally check is the way to think about it. I didn't, or nodes, I didn't check 99% of the nodes because I just knew they weren't likely to give me a better answer than I already had. Um, so when you do that, you solve part one, at least for me, in 158 milliseconds and part two, which remember was substantially more difficult if you don't use branch and bounding, it just never finished, right? I was running it and it never finished. Um, but using branching and bounding, I can do it in 345. Sorry if I'm... Sorry, I'm fighting a cold. But I wanted to get this video out. Because um, I have fun doing this stuff. I hope, I hope you all know. Um, so part two would have just never finished. I We ran it for several minutes. And, well, I shouldn't say it wouldn't have ever finished, but it, it definitely wasn't an optimal solution, right? Where now I can do it in 345. And I should add, um, I used Rayon for this, right? So if you look at my solutions, I do, when I'm solving it, I use par iter. Why, did, why can I solve it in 145 milliseconds? Um, well, uh, you know, it, it, right here it said each one takes on average 12 or whatever. I spin all of them up and try them all at the same time. And uh, then I just have to sum them up at the end. I actually don't know if par iter helps on this one. But it almost surely does on this one, right? Because there's a lot to check. You still spend enough time checking that it's probably worth it. So, again, I don't know if I've talked about this before. But Rayon is a cool tool, especially in Rust, where if you ever have an iterator and you're doing long calculations um, uh, through those iterators, just shove Rayon in it. And it's literally as simple as um, changing iter to par iter and then including this Rayon prelude. Obviously you have to add it to your cargo, um, Tommel, right? Add it as a dependency, but um, it, it's really just that. And then you do it all in the thing. Uh, and there you go. Now you have the answer. You've suddenly solved a problem that's intractable, right? Hard to solve by doing some bounding, right? Is like, can I do an estimation of how far I am or how likely I am to get a better result down this path? And if you're not like, you're not going to get it, just don't even try it. And I say likely a lot, I'm sorry, but you, again, remember it needs to be accurate, right? So it should be like an upper bound value. But once you get that, this branch and bound can help you a lot. And like I said, I think it'll, yeah, 
Um, so these best first search algorithms like Dijkstra and A star, those are technically branch and bound, right? This is a general programming idea of if you know there's a lot to, to, to traverse, the way you can optimize it is by pruning things that you that aren't going to help you, right? So this is just another tool for you to put in your kit to solve problems, whether it be at work or the puzzles we're solving or things like that. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully uh, you learned a little bit. Um, again, if you can come up with a better heuristic, I would love to see it. So I think you might maybe going one level deep, more deep might help you. Um, it'd be worth thinking about seeing if that um, gives you better results, fewer iterations. Um, you could also, I mean, admittedly, you're only doing about a million implementations, but there might be some way to do some of this stuff faster. Some of these, uh, you know, I just implemented using these like uh, traits, but maybe there's a faster way to do some of the math in here and that might help you a little bit. So I'd love to see if you've got anything faster, which brings me up to the next one and I'll try and make a community post about this. But the next two that I have in mind are solving some puzzles um, with respect to performance, right? So it's not just solving the problem, but can you come up with the fastest solution to it? Um, there's a lot of community members that uh, uh, in Advent to Code and other places where just solving it is cool, but can you like eke out the performance of your CPU to get faster? And uh, so I want to do that in another video. Some people enjoy that and it's really fun to not just like solve a problem, but like can you like squeeze out the most performance of it? And can you, what many people do is actually solve a whole year or all of the years and they say, how fast can I do it? And their goal is like, can I solve the whole year in under a second or something along those lines, right? Um, so I'll show you some of those in an upcoming video. The other one that I wanna do is, uh, we'll have a couple more problems, uh, I think in the leak code area that talk about a new another tool that we can add to our kit called the sliding window. Um, so we'll talk. I think those will be some upcoming videos that we'll talk about in the next week. Uh, we'll get to those. But again, thank you everyone for your time. And I really appreciate your comments and your thoughts. Again, my goal is to build up a community where we can all learn and grow. I'm learning from this. I hope you guys are all, you all are learning from it. And uh, I'll just say, have a great day and talk to you next time.